New Zealand's leading authors, poets, playwrights and musicians offer audiences a fortnight of fresh ideas, future thinking, language and laughter at the 23rd Going West Writers' Festival. Now this year's opening night features the first New Zealand performance by Multimedia Collaboration 2, which consists of musician Moana Maniapoto and electronic music producer Paddy Free. Those music legends join us right now. Welcome Moana and Paddy. Oh, Thank you. It's really nice to have you in the studio. Now, this sounds fascinating too. Like you've performed it in Finland and Taiwan, yes. but not in New Zealand. So why did you start there and how was it received? They emailed and said, would you like to come and play? <laughs> <laughs> I went, oh, hang on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we um, we did our first little gig up in, um, in the Arctic, as you do. And one was in a kind of a theatre that was seated. So that was quite fabulous. I had my little daughter there, so I thought, well, she might as well pay her way, get up and put the poi and do be useful. So she was awesome, actually. Um, and then we did one in a kind of a ragey club with all the reindeer herders and everybody like... <laughs> <laughs> It's fun. Fini yeah, Finnish rappers rapping in their uh, in their uh, native indigenous Sami language. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Paddy, tell us about the kind of music that we can expect from two. Well, there's beats. There's some there's some dancey stuff. There's some mellow stuff. Um, basically, I've been working with a lot of uh, Maori and Pacific Island musicians the last twenty years, trying to find a way in that matches some of the. Um, aspects of the language and the tonga pōro, the uh, traditional instruments. So, yeah, it's a continuation of that. that. Sounds fascinating. So, what what sort of messages are in the music? Um, well, I suppose um, uh, some songs are in English, some are in Māori. Um, our usual kaupapa papa is to sort of find ways to connect with the audience. So, there's a lot of people out there that share the same concerns in terms of the environment mm. or the future. Te reo, culture, culture, oh God, I can't even speak now, um, stuff like that. So yeah, that's our, our general kaupapa. We've been working on a project too where we've, um, for our next album, where we're pulling together um, six artists from around the world, six female artists, wow. to collaborate on um, six songs. So we're nearly finished that. that so we're going to cool. test a couple um, next week. You're tempting us and teasing us with that. What was the the decision to put projections into this and make it a bit more of a multimedia experience? Oh, that's because my partner's like a filmmaker, <laughs> and he is too. Excellent. So, um, so that's kind of a natural segue for us. We did that with our band, but Paddy's um, he creates um, music videos. What do you call yourself, eh? V video VJ 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 yeah video it's jockey. like the music shows of days DJ. gone by yeah. they were VJs when they yes <laughs> how do you come up with it all though so you've got so the the music obviously comes first and then you put the sort of visual parts around it is that how it works or does it all yeah it wouldn't work the other come way come, or does it all kind of get like happening at the same time <laughs> <laughs> where well, you're doing the song and you've got an idea of how it's going to have the visuals in it that's what I meant. Yeah, well, you go for you go for pace. You know, you, you know, you sort of there's there's a there's a kineticism and a pace to to you can edit or do your visuals, so you make things that match and yeah. and you try and you know stay with the co upper of the particular song. Actually, you, you should do you should do the visuals first next time and then put the music to them. I know, I, know, I just think so. <laughs> Throw it out there. <laughs> Moana, obviously you're Music Hall of Fame royalty, you've oh, got Moana and the tribe, don't do that, it's true, you've got Moana and the tribe as well and we've known you since, since for a long time now, not that long, um, but what made you decide, <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm trying not to dig a hole but I'm saying I've, I've, I've yes, appreciated you for some oh, time, the, the money that you bring with what you've achieved so far is incredible, what made you decide to move on to a project like this? Um, well, our big band is, is um, costs a lot to feed them and take them around <laughs> places, actually. Now, Paddy, he eats a lot, and I do, but we're kind of, you know, more um, mobile. Um, and it just gives us an opportunity to show off um, Paddy's prowess in his different areas with his beats and his, his fascinating, squeaky yummy sounds that he comes up with on stage and you know it just gives us another area to explore with and experiment. Now Patty you celebrated was it 20 years you released a, an album last year celebrating 20 years in the industry? That's right yeah well it was uh, 
21 years now of Pitch Black, uh, my electronica duo with Mike Hodgson, and our debut album uh, just last month was 20 years old. So. Wow, 20 years old. Yes, I know. That's incredible. And how's things changed for you? Like, obviously, the technology is something that you use a lot, and that's changed dramatically. Oh, hugely. I mean, in the mid 90s, or really, I started going back in the 80s, and in, in the 80s, synthesizers became computers, then computers became recording studios. And We're doing your phone now, can't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. Mm. You can, yeah. Uh, to use the oldest cliche in advertising, the only limit is your imagination. It, it really is now. It's a good one, though. Yeah. And we, we actually doing our recording for our, our album, Ono. Um, the women are recording in the different countries, like one in Norway, one in Australia, one in Canada. Um, and the, we went up to Taiwan to meet a woman that we hadn't met before to record. But, you know, you can do all this just in his room at PR. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah. Isn't that what awesome? A, yeah. What a beautiful spot to be doing it as well. Hey, tell us about the Going West Writers Festival. What's it all about? Well, last year I was there. Um, I had to interview um, Dame Anne Sim, and we were on our way back from Taiwan. I was thinking, God, I've got to read this book. It's like 500 pages. <laughs> you no were cramming. Pressure. You were cramming. I was a cramming man. I was just trying to watch telly, you know. <laughs> and um, then I thought, no, read the book, read the book, because my mates were going, just Google, Google. <laughs> anyway, I read it, and it was just I could not put it down. And so when I sat down and, and talked with her, it was just like, so what? What really was Hongi Hika like? What was his relationship with Thomas Kendall? You get these opportunities to hear the stories behind the stories and it's just fantastic. There's so many awesome writers and you know performers that, that are there this um, this year. Oh it's fantastic and everyone's a pat well I'm a passionate born and bred Westie, don't know if you're anymore, oh, but I was yeah, yeah. and you guys are too. Hey it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. Thank you for Thank joining you very us. much. Patty Free and Moana Maniapoto performed the New Zealand premiere of their multimedia collaboration too at the Going West Writers Festival's opening night, which is on Friday, September the 14th. You can check out the Going West Festival website for tickets as well as further details about the festival.